protecting yields against the threat of fusarium ear blight at T3. What is fusarium ear blight and how does it affect your crop? FEB is a combination of two types of fungus, true fusarium and microdochium. Fusarium has two common forms in British wheat crops, Fusarium graminearum and Fusarium colmorum. Dry weather in early spring, followed by periods of wet, provide the ideal conditions for the development of the inoculum. The true Fusarium species graminearum and colmorum will destroy soft green tissue in the ear, cutting off nutrient flow above the point of infection, seriously reducing yield potential. Whereas Microdochium nivale will affect individual spikelets, affecting germination of the seed itself. Importantly, while infection from both diseases can result in similar yield losses, only the Fusarium species Graminearum and Colmorum produce the harmful mycotoxins Don and Zon. With Fusarium Graminearum having greater effect on grain quality and an increase in mycotoxin levels. How does infection occur? Infection occurs when the disease is in contact with the ear of the plant, when the plant is in flower and the anthers are extruded. Fusarium graminearum and microdochium use warm, wet, humid periods to release windborne ascospores which travel through the crop. Rain splash events can also be responsible for the transfer of Fusarium colmorum and microdochium inoculum to the ear. In typical years, growers with infected crops can expect a 10% drop in yields. However, in high disease situations, losses can be up to 30%. Further losses can be experienced if fusarium infected plants suffer repeated wetting of the ear during grain fill as this can lead to high levels of mycotoxins forming in crops. Should these exceed legal limits for human consumption or EU guidance values for animal consumption, the marketability of the crop will be affected. How to control fusarium and microdochium? Prothioconazole has been shown to be the only effective treatment for fusarium and microdochium in winter wheat. Alternative chemistry such as tebuconazole will not provide protection against microdochium, while resistance to strobilurins means they too are no longer an effective treatment for the disease. When to spray? To get the most out of your T3, look to spray at mid-flowering between GS63 to 65, when the flowers are open and the anthers are extended in the main canopy. With most T3 sprays only having plus or minus three days activity against the disease, getting your timing right to ensure the maximum protection for your crop is important. So, in summary, identify when crops are flowering and check weather forecasts to time sprays in order to provide the best protection. Spray a minimum of 0.55 litres per hectare of ProLine 275 for effective control of both Fusarium and Microdochium. Bayer Crop Science. Science for a better life.